only okay sorry thank you again, mama mm -hmm. yes thank you yes, so um answering question one to, um to summarize what you said apostle peter was a church man he's also a family man he was a pastor he was a man of prayer and he's also a person who is accountable so meaning he's not he doesn't just come when he feels like he's he's accountable and he's reliable yes. awesome thank, thank you mama all you have said so much does anyone have something to add to the to what mama said Please raise your hand. You can say no, or you can say thumbs down or something so I can know that you're actually engaging. Let's see if there's anything in the chat box. Okay, looks like there is nothing and I don't have anything to add concerning that question because Mama said it so, couldn't have said it better. So we're moving on to question number two, and that is Papa Scott. My gosh, good, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Papa Scott. Okay, so my question is, uh, what is, is approach to leadership? Yes, the kingdom leadership. Okay. Um, I'm just making sure my phone, because my phone was done somewhere. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so his approach for leadership is the same as it was for... Um, the church, it was big on uh, family and the church. So he believes if you can lead at the home, then you will be ready for leader, leadership in, mm. in the church. Because, yeah, he said, you know, um, deacons, they will deal with their wife right, just the same yeah. as they will deal with church members. So he saw that he... he he didn't separate the the two. It mm -hmm. was it was one for him, and that that, that is his approach was oneness. It wasn't like um, my yeah. family life versus ministry life. He balanced both. Um, yes. His his approach to leadership. Yeah, I believe that's the model he saw Jesus did, and so he did the same. So he, mm -hmm. his approach was very balanced. I actually learned a lot too from first and second Peter, listening to his approach. And when you go into the book of Acts also, you saw that he really, his approach to leadership was very balanced. He it was not one-sided. Yeah. He didn't separate anything. So which is good, really good for, um a role model point of view where you have a, a balanced life so i would say his, his approach is um geared towards uh family and ministry get together as a whole and it was not a one-sided yes on um, and also i would say his approach really reflect uh jesus's lifestyle mm -hmm. that yeah family you know it's amazing why we call each other um in the body brothers and sisters i don't know why it is turn off that ministry and family is one you it's have one. to balance both we call each other brothers and sisters just like you would call your brothers and sister a blood by blood in the mm -hmm. spirit we call each other's brothers and sisters so um this is what i saw thank you thank you thank you so much papa scott thank you for your contribution um apostle peter approach to leadership he believes that if you're a good leader at home 
you'll be a good leader at your church or wherever you lead because leadership starts at home and and um as um mr john maxwell said he could tell the kind of person you are by what you by what you do daily by how you lead he can just tell just sit and watch and tell you the type of person you is so if you can actually lead your home you can lead anywhere so the the home is like the the training ground the training ground so to be a good leader, lead at home. And once you lead at home, you can lead wherever you go. One thing that I wanted to add on that, Papa Scott, um, um, Apostle Peter approached the leadership. He believes in submission. He believes in followers submitting to their leaders. So always have somebody that you're under their authority and you're not just doing stuff by yourself. That is my addition to that part. If anyone has something to say, please raise your hand. Mama, I have seen your hand. Please go ahead, Mama. And any other addition, please raise your hand. Thank you. All right. Yes. Now, an entire chapter is dedicated to kingdom leadership by Apostle yes. Peter. First Peter chapter five. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's go there. You will see there are a few okay. things that he really emphasized. Yes. When it comes to kingdom leadership, um, there are some qualities that he notes and he says that a kingdom leader must possess. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you can see it in his own life. Yes. He did possess all of these qualities and more. He said, I exhort elders among you as one who is an elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, as a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Shepherd, you see? Yes. He said, kingdom leaders should be shepherd. The flock of God that is among you, take care of them. He's telling, he's showing us his approach and his understanding to kingdom leadership. It's not lording over the people. He's mm -hmm. taking care of them um pleasing god in in the process yeah meaning that you are accountable first to the father as a kingdom leader and then you're taking care of the people as to daddy yeah. you're not just taking care of the people no you, you, your daddy is in your mind as to do kingdom leadership your submission as a kingdom leader is not to the assignment first it's yeah. to the lord because it's easy to get loyal to the assignment to the point where you forget that there's a lot of the assignment. Mm -hmm. He says that do it willing. So kingdom leadership is a willing thing. It's a willing act, not, not forced. Not for dishonest gain. Uh -huh. yes. You're not mm. gain. I won't talk too much about this because this is the main chapter for the um, June conference. Yes. But mm. you see there, it says, I'm pleasing God doing it right and then he said kingdom leadership is about submission yeah look at it verse five he said likewise you the younger ones and the elders or the leaders and the followers all of you submit yourself one to another yes um his approach to kingdom leadership is not bossy it's service mm -hmm. you yes, see in Acts true. chapter two that when there was a need for somebody to talk, he didn't wait for anybody to volunteer. He just stepped forward and he served. Mm -hmm. um, his approach to kingdom leadership, he believed in prayer and the word. He yes. knows that as a leader, your prayer life and your word life will affect the people that are listening to you. So he never played with his prayer and his word life. So I believe that he understood that kingdom leadership is not about the flesh. It's about mm -hmm. the spirit. I pass the mic. Thank you, Mama. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah, there is something that I have in my notes here that I, I wanted to say. His, his, his approach to his said, um, in terms of kingdom leadership, don't try to lift yourself. Stay humble under your training. And in due time, you will be promoted. Meaning, don't try to promote yourself. Serve. Be a good leader, do what you're supposed to do, and daddy will lift you. Never try to lift yourself. So that is my little addition to that one. 
So the next question is me. Let's read the question. It says, what is um, Apostle Peter understanding and approach to kingdom marriage? All right, let's go in my note. Question number three. So Apostle Peter um, approach to kingdom marriage, he, he talks about the husbands and he talks about the wife. His understanding is that in kingdom marriage, the wife shouldn't be submissive to their own husband. It says, let your lives be, for wives, he said, wives, let your lives be a testament to your spouse as this will win him over better than words. So in this case, he's talking about, this is um, if you have a husband that is not saved, don't go ahead and talk too much. Don't talk too much. Let your actions, let me pull it up. I just left somebody in the room, sorry. It says, um, let your life be a testimony. Mean talk less. Let, let your action show that you are truly a wife and win your husband over by that way. It says, in terms of wife, um, it is good for you to make yourself beautiful, but don't make that a priority. The main priority is that as wife, you close yourself instead of outside beauty. Like I said, you, you beautify yourself, but that's not the priority. The true beauty comes from within. And that is a, a gentle and a quiet spirit, which is, that is so precious to God. You can find that in 1 Peter 3, verse 4. He said, true beauty from a wife come from trusting daddy and be submissive to your husband. So if you want to look beautiful, the kingdom way, it comes from trusting daddy and being a submissive wife. Then he touched on the husband. He said, in the same way, you... Husband, you must give honor to your wife. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. As she may be, she may be weaker than you, but she is your equal partner in and it's God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. So he's showing you if you treat your wife go the way you're supposed to do you will have answered prayer but if you don't that's a hindrance to prayer so we see here that um apostles um peter's approach to to kingdom marriage the way you look at it both of us have a role to play it's not one-sided the husband have their part to play and the wife have their part to play. And when you both do play your part, you will have a beautiful life. Both of you, the, the wife will benefit and the husband will benefit. So that is my contribution for question number three. If you have something to add, please go ahead, please. All right, go ahead, mama. Thank you. You're welcome, Mama. You almost fit the board. <laughs> Good. Um, if you look at his approach to marriage, and let's not forget that the things that he's teaching are things that he has lived. And yeah. these are things he learned from walking close, very close with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why we're studying him is because there are things that were handed over to them that Jesus might not have caught, but they caught it. Mm -hmm. And what we don't okay. forget is there are mm -hmm. principles in this by in this kingdom that some people caught. They were not mm -hmm. taught them. Now Jesus definitely taught his disciples. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to marriage, we really want to pay attention to what he said because we know he was married. And we know that his marriage was not just any kind of a marriage. His home was a home that Jesus visited. Meaning mm -hmm. that if there were some things he was doing wrong, Jesus must have told him. Yes. And there are things that he did right that Jesus encouraged him to the point where if he's writing a book, he would not just write anything. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's mm -hmm. emphasizing there that the beauty of a woman 
um, the focus of the beauty of a woman should be on her gentle and a quiet spirit that yeah. daddy cries a lot and definitely mm. husbands will cry it as well yeah. um the, you have already balanced you've said it i just want to bring in the the balance which okay. um, if you look yeah uh, you will see here that there are consequences for not doing your own part mm -hmm. it's true a woman, you can struggle all your life and say, why does my husband not value me? Why is he not mm. looking at me? Why is he that? Because you, you talk too much. The one thing they say we shouldn't do is the one that we do. We want to correct them. We want to tell them what to do. And the Bible said, that's not our focus. Our focus should be on us, living the life that we ought to live. I learned from, there was something we watched once and the, the, the man said, I have a role in my house. It doesn't matter if I'm angry or sad. I have to still do my role. I was like, huh? That is good. You know, that's where character is. That's what character is about. Being consistent even when it's not comfortable. Um, doing your role as a husband even when the wife is not acting correct according to you or even according to the word. Mm. And doing your role correctly even when your husband is not acting correct. Now you come down to um, verse, I think it should be verse seven, after verse seven, verse eight, say, finally, all of you be of one mind, loving, showing love towards one another, be gracious and kind. And then he talks about these wonderful things. You, you realize that he came to the understanding that this is, there's a level of submission a man does to the wife. And there's a level of submission a woman does to the husband. Ah, it's there now. It's there. Both of them know when to come on there and listen. For example, your wife tells you, eat your veggie, eat them. It's not because you are the head of the family that you can be the leader in every yeah. little piece of your home. There are mm -hmm. aspects of your home that you have to, we have to humble ourselves and listen. Mm -hmm. There are things in my home that no matter how, because I would say women are intelligent. Can we just study this thing and be humble? There are things in my home that my husband can come ask me. That doesn't mean that in that other area, because he asked me for my advice or input in this area, it doesn't mean that that area where he's really strong in, I have to get in there and also tell him what to do. No. If you really want to enjoy a good, amazing Christian home as a man, don't marry a dummy. Marry an intelligent woman. Intelligent mm -hmm. because if you married a dummy, she's already intelligent and you, you don't know. So just go, you, just go in for the one that you know is intelligent so that you settle the matter. So that mm -hmm. you know my wife is intelligent and you can really listen when she speaks. So the balance I was bringing in here is to know that the way Apostle Peter concluded that chapter on marriage is a mutual thing. He yes. believes that a husband should listen to the wife and the wife should listen to the husband. The question is, if your spouse will listen to you, what direction will you take them? Are you going to take them to the kingdom or you're going to take them to the kingdom of darkness? Mm. Because we shouldn't only say my spouse should listen to me. Okay, your spouse will listen to you. Your spouse wants to listen to you. But what direction will you take them? That's the question. Because mm. nobody wants to be misled. So mutual submission, mutual understanding, mutual love. But then it has to be kingdom focus. You can really submit to anybody that's kingdom focused. You can really love anybody that's kingdom focused. Yes. Me I pass the mic, Mama Scott. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Mama. Well said. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Next. Who was who was was it? You were next, um, brother Edwin. Hey, <laughs> hey welcome, <laughs> brother Edwin. Mama, you, welcome, Mama. You, I was waiting for you to give details. <laughs> just, just rushed away. Okay. Thank you very much, Mama, and everybody for the privilege to share. Oh, you're welcome. Wow. It's quite a challenging assignment. Yeah, my body is hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How did Peter 
question four. How Peter yes. treats finan uh, finances in the kingdom uh, perspective. Yeah. And another phrase. Okay, what are we at least three scriptures explain his approach to kingdom finances? Kai, three scriptures, my God. Now, to Peter, one thing I noticed about Peter when it comes to money is that it is needed for kingdom expansion and stability of believers. Mm -hmm. and it is not for personal gain and that is seen in what are those scriptures oh my god i cannot believe this my scriptures please come 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 come, come, come. they are all hiding now i need them and they are hiding no please be patient with me okay <laughs> All right, I have my first scripture explaining that fact, uh, explaining that point. Now, that is seen in Peter chapter, I mean, Acts chapter 8. That money to Peter, money was not for personal gain, but for kingdom expansion and uh, stability among believers. That we will see in Acts chapter 8. You'll notice that from verse 20 to 23. No, 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 no. That's not it. That's the other point. That's not it. That's my other point. That's my other. That's my first point. Oh my God. Mama, this is not happening to me now. Take it's okay. It's okay. If you if you don't. If you no, say what you I know need, and I let go of the rest. See, I need to see my scripture. I... It's okay. Go let go of the rest. Just say the one okay. you can. All right. Let go Peter, of the rest. To Peter, money was not for personal gain, but for the expansion of the kingdom. That was when believers sold what they had and shared among themselves. But now, Peter hated it when people could not give, could not be accountable and give out of their heart, keeping nothing, hiding nothing, or try to uh, be selfish with money. So to Peter, money was for kingdom enhancement. The second point is that to Peter, I want to ask this question, Mama. Finances and money, I hope they are the same thing in this very sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I think what you, what you wanted to talk, what you were looking, maybe maybe the scripture you're looking is Acts chapter 5, verse 8. Definitely. Acts chapter 5, verse 8. I think Peter, I have it here. Let me read it. Peter, Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for this amount. Perfect, uh -oh. Mama. Said, mm -hmm. That's true. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> now, so, mm -hmm. to Peter, money is for kingdom expansion and not for personal, um, yes. and not for That's personal true. gain. And not for personal gain. Now, again, to Peter, if we look at Peter chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. I saw the word charity. Mama, charities. And he said, um, Peter chapter 4, verse 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sin. Uh, uh, I had a question when I saw the scripture. Mm -hmm. It's about yeah. giving now, Mama. Yes, it's about giving, yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's Peter again with this aspect of giving. Now to Peter, um, Peter uh, giving must not be financially, she must not be, uh, you must not give money. But what you have, you should give. Mm -hmm. So to Peter, giving is very essential in the kingdom because just by giving, you will encourage someone 
to stay among believers and not to be, some people come to church and they have issues, you know, but once you give, you keep people stable and focus on God. Mm -hmm. And then number three scripture, when it comes to money, Peter could not allow people to compare the authority of Jesus Christ with money. You cannot put the two on the same scale. So he was quite bitter. Each moment people bring money and try to like win the favor of God through money or try to choose between, uh, try to choose money over God and over Jesus Christ. That we will see with him and this, um, that's in Peter, Peter chapter three, verse one down to 11, when they met, uh, when Peter and John were making their way in or to, uh, to gather up into the temple and they made this lame, this lame man asking for, the man was asking for money, but Peter had something better for him. And that mm -hmm. was the name of Jesus Christ. So to Peter, he needed, he, he loved when it comes to finances, he appreciated accountability. He appreciated um, selflessness and he hated it when people tried to put the name, try to uh, put money above the name of Jesus Christ. Those are my small contributions. And that was my contribution. I could do better. Thank you, Mama. I dropped Thank you, mind. Brother Edwin. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You, Brother Edwin. Thank you, Brother Edwin. Thank, Thank you, you, Mama. Yes. Anyone have something to add? I have my contribution too. If you have something to add, please raise your hand. I raise my hand with my mouth, please. Okay, <laughs> Mama. I'm wondering if I should go before you so you don't sweep the board. <laughs> If you want to give me the honor to go respectfully. I would love to go first, Mama. <laughs> okay. Yes. And, and then I'll let you sweep after me. There's no bone to sweep, oh. This is a bone. <laughs> I don't know why you did that to Brother Avery. That's a bone question. <laughs> it's a bone. I know. <laughs> yeah. The bone very bone was ready. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> thank you so much, Mama. Brother Edwin. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you, Mama. You did well. Yeah. <laughs> I see Um, one approach that Apostle Peter have um, about fine finances is that you need people to have integrity. If this, if you say you're giving this, this is what you're giving. Don't lie about something. Like if you sell a house and you're like, the house is for a million dollar. You say, I'm bringing a million dollar. Don't say, okay, I got 800,000. Give what you have, but don't lie. Be a person of integrity. And that, and another thing that I see an apostle's feeder approach is that um, all of that is children should be prosperous. Mm. There should not be any Christian in need among us because those who have should share with those who doesn't have. And that is in Acts um, 4, 34 to 35, it said, there were no need of people among them because those who own land or houses would sell them and bring the money to apostle to give to those who in need. So you see his approach is about advancing people in the kingdom. Nobody should be needy. If there's someone in need, Use your resources to help. We're all that is children. See, so it's about daddy and his children and advancing them. That's my contribution for that one. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Scott. You're Thank welcome, you, Mama, Mama Scott. You're wow. welcome, Brother Edwin. All right. All right. Go ahead, Mama. Yes, his approach to kingdom finances. There are a few scriptures okay. or that will. Make it short. Um, his focus when it comes to when it came to money is purity. Yes. He he approached money from what money is. Money is spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's why you see um one scripture that comes to mind is um when um 
Neyman leprosy was cured. You see, the man of God said, I'm not taking any gift from this man. But the, the, the spiritual son did not understand. He ran and took the money. Forgetting to know that money is spiritual. It's a medium of exchange. You don't only exchange physical things with money. You also exchange spiritual things with money. So when the son went, he did not just take material things. This is my opinion. Even if the man of God said, you get leprosy or not, you already took leprosy with the material thing that he brought. Mm. So it's, that's, that's deep. And I believe that. Now, the mm -hmm. next thing that you see there is that when people give, <laughs> your yeah. giving is a report card of where you are spiritually. Mm -hmm. So he did not approach money casually. What was his approach to money? You see, Acts chapter five, that's where you really see his approach to money being displayed. He, yeah. he saw that money also reveals your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He said, why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? Yes. Uh -huh. So you uh -huh. see that your giving is not just about the financial part. It's also about your relationship with the Lord. You would know a baby Christian from a, a growing Christian because the, the growing Christian is looking for ways to give. But a baby Christian is always looking for the way to take. It's natural now, even in the natural. Babies don't want, if you touch a baby's milk, Car, bottle, okay. Okay. But adults will give their kuru kuru and adakwa to children. So uh, what was his approach to kingdom finances? His mindset was giving. His mindset was purity. Um, he said his currency, if you haven't listened to that series by Mama Cindy Trim, please listen. Yes. Listen yes. would change your life forever. Um, mm -hmm. the currency that Peter valued was the giving currency of the kingdom, which is what tight offerings, um, first fruit. I hope we know that's a currency because if you think you can prosper as a child of God without using your own currency, you're wasting your time. There's something I was listening to her before I came on. My goodness. She was talking about the first fruit as a currency. And then the, wow. the thing with Mama Cindy Trim is that the way she explained things, my gosh, she's a teacher. She yeah. said something. She, she explained, he said, the currency, because she doesn't want you to misunderstand what she's teaching. She said, the mm -hmm. currency of the United States is dollars. The currency mm -hmm. of Great Britain is pound. He said, the kingdom has a currency. And I was like, man, I need to hear this currency. <laughs> what is it? Tights and offering. Yes. Yes. Giving. That's how we exchange in the kingdom. He said, mm. and lot of people don't believe this. He said, but this, he said, I, I'm not teaching. She says it over and over that I'm not teaching you theory. I'm teaching you my life. Mm. She said, you will prosper when you take your tithing and your offering serious. You will, not maybe. She said, a lot of people don't know that this is a currency. And it's a currency system that works. How God will bring it back to you, it's not your business. Mm -hmm. So that's the same approach he, he had. And then you all have already said it. He believed in kingdom building and, and yeah. not tearing down people. He saw money as an opportunity to further the kingdom of God, take people further in the kingdom, take lives further. He's focused when it came to finances, was not about making money. Look at when he went mm -hmm. to the house. He didn't go there and say, um, the services of an apostle is, no. They said, come, he left. He didn't even say, are you going to pay my transport? No, he didn't ask no question. You know, nowadays, if you call an apostle, they'll tell you I sleep in a seven-star hotel. I mm -hmm. hope you know this. Many people still say five-star. There's more than five-star now. I don't know how many star it is now, but then, some people will say, oh, no, you know, I'm an apostle. Now I cannot sleep in anything less than a five star. Eh? Six, seven star is good. You didn't hear anything like that. Even when they would take gifts to the poor in Jerusalem, you didn't hear that apostle Peter put it at his feet. No, 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 no. Um, it's very important for us to have a healthy relationship with money. There are people in church lately that are even scammers. 
And why do they come? Is it because they cannot do work money? No. You you go even the like we've talked about giving. People will give from their tithe and their offerings so that kingdom people can go forward. Then you see somebody that's that came to church, right? And the agent said it nicely. In church, we need to be able to help those that are in need. But there are some people in church that are not in need. They're either needy or they're scammers. That's true. So you cannot now make a, 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 a general thing and say people should not give. No, as a leader, you have that pure life. You're living holy before the Lord. Help people. Let's remember that there's a currency in this kingdom. I'm telling you, if you have not listened to that, if you listen to it, it will change your life. Yeah, it, it, it really goes back to amplify what we learned in when heaven went public. When that mm. woman was telling, yes, that woman was telling us about um, prayer being a currency, fasting being a currency. Mama Cindy Chin is saying it again with some level of authority wow. because she leaves it. Mm-hmm. He said, don't, don't rush to do the other currency of the world. I was talking to my son yesterday and I told him, I said, your problem is that you think your job is your source. I said, you have to divorce from that nonsense. Okay. If there's one life you can see it from, it's me. You are the one that we used to go do grocery. You know that I could buy this and don't buy that. I said, but now when we go, I don't think, even if I check the prices, it's not because I don't have the money, just because I want to be diligent. But still, at the end of the day, he always tells me, mama, buy what you need know the price and i do pay i do i buy the things i need what are we saying it works me i'm a bona fide example that it works there was a time i could not rob two dollars what am i selling all of you know all of you know that this is not anything hidden all of you listening to me know i don't say nothing i don't say nothing this one is a by the way I, I heard about a wonderful healing meeting, the way people were talking about it. I was like, man, I'm going to be part of it. And then I heard that you need to register. By the time I click on it, they say registration is $200. I was wow. like, good. You see, the only person who is not selling nothing is Mama Ima. Kingdom class is free. BBI is free. Mentorship is free. Everything that you should be paying me at least $500 for one. <laughs> <laughs> and you're getting kingdom, not even religion. You see that? So you want to remember that. Because one of the reasons, what are my motivation? My daddy don't serve on nothing. If he gives you bread for free, what's my problem? What is my problem? Definitely there are things we can package and, and, and do them professionally and do some marketing. That's different. Yeah. So what am I saying? Apostle Peter was not focused on money. Mm-mm. Let's divorce from this mammon. He was not focused on money as to cash. Let's divorce from everything being cash, cash. That's why people are limited because they are not entrusted with true riches until you can prove to daddy that you can, you're not, you're not going to be, you're not going to be carried by mammon. You heard what Papa said the other day. Hmm. When Papa spoke, I was like, daddy, you need to talk to me again about some things because I was at a point where I was looking for businesses, ideas and things. And Papa said, I have never sold anything. I've never eaten a dime from a book. Nothing like that. You see, these people write books to bless people. But then yeah. the first people come in and start writing books to sell for money. You see? But then they can never meet their level of prosperity because they are prospering at the level of the blessing. Mm-hmm. Not at the level of selling anything. You can't say yeah. anything and meet them at their level. No. Uh-uh. Yeah. So, but definitely as a leader, what's the balance? Because you know I must bring in the balance. What's the balance? There are a lot of people that will come to, let's say, for example, Bill or to a church. I'm very aware I'm teaching leader of leaders. I know that you might not think you are a leader of leaders, but I know what I'm called to do and I know who I'm called to lead. So I know you're a leader of leaders. So I have to teach the whole truth. For example, Mama Scott, nobody should come to Jamaica International Holy Ghost Fire uh, uh, com- co- convention or yeah. church if they don't pay their tithe they don't give their offering they are not a member that is struggling you can't just carry the resources of those that are dedicated and give to them you don't do that mm-hmm. no yes we have to be able to prove that even here at Bill 
we have to be some people the way they behave is like man i can't go to be because um there was one time i was in need mama didn't even know about it and she only see other people's needs she didn't see my own by the spirit my dear only see what is shown to me i don't see people on the west so please mm. don't judge me like that so they get out they get offended they get angry when it comes to giving they don't want to give or they can give once in five months and then they want you to take their personal problem that you don't even know about serious mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that that's childishness so there's a balance as much as it wasn't money focused he was also diligent that's the yeah, balance that's I want to bring. diligence is very important when it comes to god's money um are we going to be perfect i don't i'm not even, i don't even sit and think about perfection i don't that's just the truth because the blood has a place in my life so what if i make a mistake i i didn't mean to it's a mistake mistake means i wanted to take and i missed it i'll just refocus mm. we can go on and on but um if you look at his life you realize how money was not his focus service was his focus doing the things of the kingdom was his focus when it came to how he handled money, purity was the goal. He wasn't doing dirty business. Mm -mm. And uh, that's a big thing, especially in this generation where uh, people don't care how they do things. They just want to do it. And then when you do it and it's not right, the worst one is if somebody calls you to accountability, you get mad. Mm -mm. And that's not the kingdom. The kingdom is a lot of accountability in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It could even be your wife or your husband saying, hey, I think the way you're handling money is not correct. Don't say, eh, is it your money? Spend your money your own way and let me spend my own my own way. No, no. Accountability is key when it comes to money, to finances in this kingdom. Mama Scott, if you let me, I'll keep talking because this is a very big topic. Yes, it is. <laughs> Especially when it comes to yeah. leadership. You see, yeah, I see they didn't bother. Jesus said, Oh, yeah, uh, go down there, get a fish, take the money, let's pay tax. Yeah. And he just went and did the same. They never allow money to, to keep them sleepless nights. Never. Mm. They never. Because you have, you, you will worship who you, you, will, you worship. Your service is a worship. Mm. If your money, if money keeps you overnight, that's who you're worshiping. I'll end with this testimony. This year, by the time Darwin was going to college, I've shared it before. Daddy always gives me a word for his college every semester. Like now he's coming back home. I, I was praying yesterday. I said, this boy's coming home. Please give me a word. I've learned to, 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 to live with my children according to the, a word. There's something that was happening with royalty. And today I went to press. I said, Lord, give me a word concerning this situation. And he gave me a word. So what that when that situation came up, I went back with the word that the Lord had given me before he went to school. And the Lord showed me how to get that money. It was money. It wasn't a spiritual thing. It was money related. So what am I saying? If you take your life to be a spiritual life for real, so many things will fall in place. Please. Yeah. Let's handle even our finances spiritually. Let's do our kingdom and enjoy it. That's yeah. what I have to say. Mm -hmm. All right, Mama Scott, pass the mic to you. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. You're welcome. Okay. Kingdom billionaire, not here. Minister Amy, are you available? Minister Kaba? Okay. Deacon. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to, let's pull up the, what's the next question in line? Question number five, give a summary of the book of First Peter. Okay. Brother Edwin, do you want to go? Uh. <laughs> or, or I can go have a summer too. Brother Edwin, I didn't hear you. 
I'm still trying to put it together, Mama. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll 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 go. Yeah. Okay. The summary of the book of First Peter. First Peter is written to Christians, and it's also um, reminding them that they are chosen by God. It's reminding them that they have a future and a hope, and they should trust in God. And I also have that um, First Peter is about practical ways that you can live an effective kingdom life. That's my summary for it. Okay, my summary. I was just listening. I didn't. Ha- I didn't read it. Like um, I listened to the. I listened to the scripture, and listening to it, it kept. It just uh, occurred to me that Peter talked so much about the kingdom love work. Yes. And it's just what is. It does the. That's um talking about our previous class. We talked about the kingdom love work. And in the book of First Peter, most of the things he said was about love. Yeah. And the importance of love in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. After it all, Peter said we should give, that is charity. And then we should focus on growing in the word of God. Because without the word of God, we cannot we we cannot uh, walk the law the love walk talk less of growing and mm-hmm. and and um being um hospitable with one another so in a nutshell the book of peter and peter as a whole is talking about love in practical yes. terms thank you Thank you, Brother Edwin. Thank yes, you. Ma'am. Mama, do you have anything to add? Papa Scott, where are you? Do you have anything to add? Okay, so. We're moving on to question 5B. Let me see if it didn't answer up. Not yet. Question 5. Question 5B says, give a summary of the book of 2 Peter. What is 2 Peter saying? Summarize the book of 2 Peter. Um, 2 Peter. Second Peter, what um what I really get the summary of Second Peter is um it's about um Apostle Peter like he's persuading Christian to mature spiritually, not to remain spiritual babies, but they need to mature into the word. They need to mature into the word and not to remain spiritual babies. That was the main focus um, of Second Peter. Goes the same with sense? me. Yeah. Goes the same with me. Second Peter is about his focus on on us spiritual. growing in the yes. word. Growing in the word, and yes, Brother Edwin. Growing in the word and coming to a point where every believer agreed mm-hmm. had the, we, we, like um, believers having the same view on things based on their word bank, like what they understand about a particular issue. For instance, if there should be unity in the body, then we should come to that point where we we kind of see things from the same perspective using the word of God as our measuring um, tool. So Second yeah. Peter is focused on us growing in the word of God. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Edwin. Thank you. 
thank you so much. Okay. So you see, it's very important for us not to remain spiritual babies. We have to grow. We have to grow in our spiritual walk. We have to grow in the word. We have to grow in prayer. We have to I grow. No time for being a baby Christian. We have to mm. grow. Yes. So looks like we're at question number five. It's conclusion and deep finding. Minister Ibai, are you available or not? Okay. Let's see if there's a message from her. Hold on. I think I have a contribution. Oh, she's yes. at work. She's at work. Okay, Minister, but I saw your message. Okay, go ahead, Brother Edwin. Um, was it yesterday? Yes, yesterday. This week I've been following this um covenant uh covenant uh, prayer time oh, our with prayer. Us. yeah yes so um papa david shared a word about money i think it was wednesday service yes not actually the covenant of prayer okay he shared a message on money and how mm -hmm. christians should not make money as their god or something and that reminded me too of a certain testimony shared about yeah. a certain man who used his money to, to win souls for the Lord. I, 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 I was really, I was so encouraged and challenged when he was talking about using five hundred is it 500 million mm. per week? Mm. I'm, I'm not sure that figure is actually the thing, but he said at the end of the day, after spending that much money, daddy mm -hmm. rewarded him with a contract worth 6 billion naira. Oh, I think I heard that testimony. Yes, yes, I oh been following, have been following. And mm -hmm. I was so so challenged and mm. like God. So money to you is a tool for the kingdom tool. expansion. Yeah, is one of the tools. You know. So how then should I treat money? Hmm. I am supposed, therefore, to be accountable to God about the money He gives to me. Yeah. using it not for my own gain but for the expansion of his kingdom on earth yes and that can really really make me to agree fully with mama when she gave uh, uh, what she uh, heard from a message that in the kingdom our currency is tight and offerings mm -hmm. so when it comes to money daddy daddy expects us to use it for the expansion of his kingdom and not for our own personal gain because mm -hmm. to him money is a tool yeah i think i'm going to end there Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Thank you for it. Money is a tool for advancing the kingdom, and we need to really see money for what it is. And I think when we see money for what it is, we'll have access to more money because that way money is not controlling us, but we're actually controlling it and doing what it's supposed to do. And that's to advance the kingdom. Thank you, Brother Edwin. Thank you, Mama. Okay. You're welcome. All right. 
So, Mama, your hand is up, please. Yes. I want to agree with Brother Edwin that different kinds of offerings as is our currency. We use money to advance the kingdom. And don't forget, kingdom is people. Kingdom mm -hmm. is daddy and his children. So we should never miss that. Number two, um, my, my summary, number five, question number five. I think first Peter, in first faith Peter, the apostle is showing us how to live the kingdom life practically. Yes. How to live the kingdom life practically, especially when things are difficult. Mm -hmm. Especially where we are in tight places. He's showing us that we are a royal priesthood. We are not any kind of people, no matter what's going on. The word of God that purchased us is durable. The essentials of our kingdom living. Um, and all of this, his approach or his philosophy to life, he saw them. He learned them from Jesus and he saw him lift it. And that's what he taught us in the book of First Peter, chapter 1. My summary of First Peter, or Second Peter, is how to practically live in anticipation of the second coming of the Lord. What mm -hmm. is expected of us, the things we will begin to see. He talks a lot about us being focused because there'll be false prophets. There'll be deceptions. There'll be evil things. When mm -hmm. the end is approaching, these are the things that will be visible. They won't do wickedness in the hidden. That's why he's showing us and preparing us. But then chapter one is powerful because he's showing us how not to be distracted what we ought to be doing so we are not distracted. So I wrote down, as it, uh, Second Peter chapter 2 is practical. What to do as we wait for the second coming. He showed us what will be happening during the period of the second coming. That is what to expect. And what we ought to be doing, how we should be living. And then he concluded by saying we should be focused. We should live at peace. Uh, we should not be living a feeling led life, you know, a feeling led life. I feel, I yes. feel, I feel, mm -hmm. but a holy led life or a holy spirit led life. So it's very important. That's my summary. He was showing us how to live in the kingdom uh, or live as kingdom cities in the end times. I pass the mic. Yep, we have currencies and they are more powerful. And these currencies will work anytime. It's a matter of choice if we want to do it. Because these yeah. things we really know. A lot of people know it. But the difference now is in the doing. Will you do it? Do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. It's too easy too. To the point where if you allow your mind, your mind will mess you up. It's true. Mama Scott, take the mic. Thank you, Mama. Thank you for your huh? contribution. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Papa Scott, you're next, please. Thank you, Mama. Oh, thank you, Mama Scott. My you're God. Okay. okay, so now um I thought I was gonna add to Papa Edwin. So now this is conclusions and stuff or Whatever you have to offer, go ahead, Papa Scott, if it's conclusion. I have the world to offer. Can you handle okay. it? Yeah. Yeah, we can. <laughs> go ahead. Ah, okay. Um, yes, from Apostle Peter's life, we really showed the uh, laid a good example for a kingdom citizen. Because, you know, as kingdom citizens, we are leaders, whether we know or we don't know, we are leaders, we are lights. So I love the way we demonstrate his teaching by his lifestyle. Yeah. So I really admire that. And um, I'll do otherwise. I remember one time when Daddy told me, he said, <clears throat> Let your message or let 
your life be the message. So don't just read and preach. Live it, then preach it. Mm -hmm. and, and I see that I was not the first one. Because <laughs> this is exactly how Apostle Peter lived. He lived what he taught. Yeah. Um, yes. And when he, you know, as a true kingdom citizen, Apostle Peter, you saw that the focus is always building, building. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, if he's giving a correction, the correction is always, is always to build. You remind me of mom, because when he, when he teaches, he, he teach in a way that it opened the eyes of whoever he's teaching. For like, for instance, he taught the whole community about the diligence of money and the importance of money when it comes to the Holy Spirit with those um, Ananias and Sephora's life. He said, why did you vote? I, I can guarantee you nobody now from there won't do anything like that. That was a life lesson forever. So, yeah, nobody would uh, come cook up something like that anymore after that. They're like, hey, you remember Anaya? <laughs> you remember? I would not even let that thought come across my mind. And then in other sense, when he was just alive, as we talk um, to, like he said, the deacons should do this way, leaders and honor the elders. He saw that, that's what he did. So when he taught it, you notice anybody who wasn't saying like, hey, you know, like some of the Pharisees that I was doing Jesus, like, oh, you say, and I say, nobody can say because he's demonstrating it. So I really learned that those are my takeaways and deep findings. Um, you know, when you put everything in the right perspective and priority, our life will be balanced. Um, <laughs> you see that money did not determine what project we took on. It was not by money. It was by the kingdom, advancing the kingdom. So he, he was so kingdom focused and he demonstrated that, that that's how I want to live. That's how I will live like that. Kingdom focus and kingdom conscious. Whatever it is to advance the kingdom the right way because he's big on integrity and diligence also, then that's what I'll do. His life bring glory to God. So that's what I'll do. So this is my takeaway in finance. Thank you, Mama Scott. Thank you, Papa Thank Scott. You, Papa Scott. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you. Okay, final call. Anyone else, if you're muted, go ahead and raise your hand if you have something to say. Run to the restroom if you have to. Oh, is it deep findings yet? Yes, mama. Oh, I didn't know. Deep findings. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, my deep findings is that in this kingdom, ay, 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 is somebody ready? <laughs> we are ready. ready We're ready. We're ready. I give the bow. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Papa is teaching us well. Okay. Mm. Mm. Now I'm, I'm, I'm buying time. <laughs> In this kingdom, daddy will only reveal. You will only get revelation to the level at which you, you abandoned and left to follow him. Hey, hey. Did we hear? In this kingdom. Mm -hmm. You said daddy will only give you revelation according yes. to the level that you abandon yourself for him. Yes. Okay. Because he's not going to throw his pearl to swines. Yeah. Let's read um, Luke chapter 5, verse 11. You see there that 
um, or we start from verse 10, um, maybe verse 9. So um, for there, verse 10, okay. So the sons of Zebedee, Simon's brother, Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish men. Look at verse 11. So Peter pulled his boat to the shore, left everything and followed him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you hear? He left, everything yes, he left everything and followed him. Why mm -hmm. is it that somebody can read their Bible and see something that some will read would not? Because they, are not, they don't want to leave anything. Number two, you get a revelation. Why is it that you don't do it? Because you don't want to leave anything. This kingdom, that's a principle. I saw it again, the principle of self-denial. You see, unless a seed, that's it, it's you. Unless you deny your own ways, unless you come to that aggressive kingdom, living where you're like, no, my mama did this, it didn't work. I'm not going to live like this. I'm going to leave the kingdom with aggressively leaving yes. everything. Kingdom men like Peter, they were kingdom men. A lot of people think Jesus just decided to pick some people that he liked. No, hmm. the Bible said they left everything. It is my oh, humble man. opinion. Yeah, all the apostles went through it, an apostolic test. I, uh, hmm. They went through an apostolic training test and they made it. They are not apostles just because Jesus picked them. I hope you know there's a difference between disciples and apostles. Yes. Disciples, he had many. Apostles, there were 12. Now, when we look at the, we don't know how Judas was called, but we realized that we were not told that Judas left anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't hear that Judah answer one question that was asked. Mm -hmm. Is it ringing a bell to anybody? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Why was I keep asking the question? Why was Peter the closest? Closest because he was dead to self. Even when mm -hmm. he answered his question, he was not thinking if then uh, Bartholomew would be laughing at him. No, he just answered. He was ready to grow. He was ready to know. He was ready for intimacy. He could even protect Jesus from dying. That tells you the kind of person Peter was. Mm. So my deep finding is, you really want to go close to the father. You want to be a kingdom man or woman. You must deny yourself. You That's can't true. be self, self, self and do anything with the, in this kingdom because it's contrary, it's contrary, it's opposite to the kingdom. Mm. So... Even if it's work, do it as unto the Lord. Your marriage as unto the Lord. You're walking out as unto the Lord. You're running outside as unto the Lord. You're doing errands as unto the Lord. Remember, the kingdom is daddy and his children. Meaning, if you're serving, even if it's uh, uh, at work, you don't even know who those children are. You might be yeah. the president of your country, might be in your class, and you don't know it. My God, I'll say it again. That child on research ground, you don't want to just be mean to them because that could be the president of the country. That's true. You want mm -hmm. to be able to treat everybody like, you see, you see his mindset? He said, treat everybody with honor. Where did he learn that from? Mm -hmm. That's what Apostle Peter said now. Jesus. He said, treat everybody with dignity. I said, ah, mm -hmm. these people think different. Everybody? Haven't you mean mean people? <laughs> He said, no, treat everybody with dignity. Everybody, everybody. Hey, you know, uh, um, I finished my atomic book today. And there's something the man said in that book that really blessed my life. He said, no matter the habits you, you develop and you're very good at, no matter the things you know, always reflect and review, reflect and review. Because there are some habits you developed that were working and they were profitable, but now they are not profitable anymore. Mm -hmm. And then he said, when, he, when I listened to it, he said, the best way to live life is to always be flexible, always permitting yourself to learn, 
always permitting yourself to do Hallelujah. different and do better. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so it, it brings to mind the scripture that says the meek will inherit the earth. No matter what we know, it's always good to give allowance for growth, to learn yes. different and to improve. It's very important. I'm, I apologize for that noise. So let's mm. remember this. It is how we choose to die to serve that we mm. go higher in this kingdom. What did you leave to follow God? What have you given in exchange to follow him? Because if you only say, I mean, giving your life, that's enough. That's big. But then in this, your life, what is in there that you're giving? I remember the day he asked for my degree. I was like, daddy. And then he asked for the certificate. I said, this certificate, it took so long to get it. He said, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. So it is taking care of me. It's not because yeah. I'm anything than anybody else. no it's what you left what do what did you bronze it's what you bronze <laughs> that determine what you take back home mm. let's let's get to a point where and and surrender and giving and handing over things to god is not automatic it's not all at once it's as you go you know there's a level of surrender oh, and i think god is about to kill me but then in the next two three four years there's something he might ask me i'll be like oh no that hurts but he's not going to ask me now. He's just going to behave like, it's okay. Emma, be doing this your few hours of prayer and studies. I'm waiting for you. There's coming a time where he will take everything, appetite, hunger, sleep, everything, and he will station me in the world maybe five, six hours a day. You don't know what he can take. He can take anything and station you in one place. Are you going to let him or you want to be in charge? Those are the things we're talking about. You have something precious. You're about to eat it. It's yummy. He say, um, give it to that person. You're like, God, I'm, I was fasting. I'm trying to break my fast. He say, um, the fast continues for one more week. You're like, God, you're not serious. Are you trying to bring me to heaven? He said, no. I know how to put nutrients in your system. Let's go. Let's go. And there comes a time you want to fast. He say, um, no. You're not fasting now. This is eating time. So this kingdom is about walking with him. And letting go whatever he wants. That is what I saw. Why is Apostle Peter who he is? He didn't just appear there overnight. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. He walked. He walked until he got there. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's my Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mama. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. So we have heard. We are here. So the next part of it is us to do our part. Mm -hmm. The principles are there. The results are there. Everything are there. So it's just mm -hmm. us to, for us to follow these kingdom principles and um, live an effective life. Amen. 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 Mama, do you have anything else to say before... No, I think it's, it was a good, good fellowship. My goodness. Yes. It, at least, I think it's for me. I don't know if somebody else. It is for me, but too. I, for I me, was super blessed. Mm -hmm. Super blessed. Super, yeah. super blessed. It's so much super blessed. Yeah. Learn from Apostle Peter's life. Yes. So, so much. Seeing mm -hmm. from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. and as Pastor Peter who they say oh and after the cock crow you're going to deny me this amount of time but mm -hmm. you're actually mm -hmm. seeing Think through the that. eyes of yes you're actually mm -hmm. seeing through the eyes of somebody who's been with Jesus and know all the, the, the kingdom principles and he's giving mm -hmm. it to us like on a silver petal this is the way to live this is the way to get yourself ready for the second coming this is the way to do the love walk. This is these are all the kingdom keys. Now go mm -hmm. do it. Go do it. Yeah. So it's good to yeah. see him through a different really keys. perspective. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Good, good keys. Amen, Mama. Yes, Mama. 
Father, I thank you, Lord, for this Bible Amen. studies. Thank you for this yes. opportunity. Thank you for this privilege. I don't take it Amen. for granted. Daddy, thank Amen. you for all the keys that you've shown us today. So, Holy Spirit, I ask you, Lord, that you engrace us with the will to do everything Amen. that we have learned here today, Lord. Amen. You called us Amen. here for a feast. And you gave us so many keys, Lord, yes. as we live here today, my father, and grace us to start to use these mm -hmm. keys, my father, mm -hmm. in our finances, in our marriage, yes. in, our, in our daily lives, as we wait for your second coming, Lord. Help yes. us to live our life with intention, with intention mm -hmm. about building your kingdom. Help us, mm -hmm. Lord, to live a life that we are selfless, selfless. Mm -hmm but totally yes, to you to and to you to love you Amen. to trust you and to advance your kingdom in jesus name but i lift Amen. up mama before you lord and i say thank, you, thank lord. you lord for her life thank you Amen. lord for choosing her thank you lord for giving Amen. her this Amen. assignment thank you for her submission to every instruction that you have given to oh, her father in the amen. name of jesus father may amen. you reward amen. her may you amen. reward her according yes, to she's advancing in the kingdom my father amen. reward her my daddy thank amen. you lord for giving mama to us thank you lord for using her to feed us with these powerful kingdom keys, my daddy. I thank mm. you, my father, for our life, my father. Bless her, increase her, enlarge her. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for Mama Scott. Yes. Thank you, Mama Scott. Red coordinator. Oh, thank welcome. you. You're welcome, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Yes, thank you again, everyone, for joining. And we hope to see you again next month. It's only going to get bigger and better. Yeah. Don't come by yourself. Invite mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. Invite someone. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, mm -hmm. yes Mama Scott. Mm -hmm. Thank you again.